a falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their <coughs> hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, for some of my younger folks in here, you're not going to get my sermon at all. But for those of you who may be my age or a little bit older, you'll probably be able to understand this. So for those of you younger, be patient with me today, because I was trying to speak to the older folks in our church uh, at my 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock service, because I know they get it. Um, but for some of you who are younger, it may take some imagination. So once upon a time, and, and maybe some of you remember, it's the alternative to going to a movie theater to watch a film you wanted to watch at a time that you wanted to watch it was to go to your local video store and pay anywhere from 99 cents to four dollars and take home a, a video cassette tape that was eight inches wide one inch high and four inches wide y'all know what i'm talking about it was called a vcr and, and some of us grew up with that i'm, t I'm being you know i'm kidding <laughs> And maybe you remember the signs that were on the registers on the store. Do you remember what those signs said? Be kind, rewind, right? Or as time went on and people stopped rewinding their films because they got too lazy or whatever, there would be another sticker that would say, 50 cent fine if you did not rewind the tape. And you get it added onto your bill, right? Well, the VCR tapes have long been supplanted by other things. Uh, they've been relegated to the boxes in our garage. Does anybody still have the VCR tapes lying around? Unfortunately, yeah. I finally got rid of like 30 of them. And I'm like, well, there's some good movies. But, then, but I don't have a VCR to play them anymore. Uh, maybe they're on shelf space in thrift stores. You can go to a thrift store now, and what you'll find are cassette tapes, CDs, and, and lots and lots and lots of VCR tapes. Or maybe they're gathering dust on our perfectly aligned bookshelves, and we haven't touched them in years. Now, the DVD had a brief meteoric rise, but even that media has fallen to the wayside as we have personal handheld video TVs that we carry with us, right? The smartphone. How many of you watch videos on your smartphones? Any of you watch YouTube or you watch TV or the news? I mean, I, when I first saw that on the Metro, I think like 15 years ago, I was like, why would someone watch a TV on there? And now I do it all the time. <laughs> And some of us have discovered that we can have on-demand videos through Hulu and Netflix and, and Prime, right? And how wonderful is that? You can go and spend your $2.99 or $3.99 or $4.99 on, on Amazon now, and you can rent that thing. Now, I'm never arguing, I'm not arguing that we go back to the time of the video cassette. Uh, frankly, if you'll remember, it was such a pain to have to rewind the stupid thing, wasn't it? <laughs> And, and, I, and you really don't want to spend $4.29, which is what Blockbuster was charging by the time they finally closed down for a, for a week rental. And, and now the funny thing is you can find a lot of those same films for about the same price at Walmart in a bargain bin, right? But I think about those bygone days, those days when there was that sign that said, be kind, rewind. And I think we've probably lost something. I think we've lost the opportunity to be considerate to another person. You see, it was a pain for the video store to have to take all their little uh, video cassettes and stick them in the rewinder and rewind all those. That's a pain. But how many of you ever experienced that, that particular pain of getting that video home and you had to do it yourself? And you really got your popcorn ready, you got your nachos ready or whatever else, and you had to sit there and wait for this thing to rewind all the way to the beginning. And maybe it happened enough times that you became thankful that somebody else was considerate. And maybe you thought, you know what, it's really nice, and it is really kind to rewind that tape. So maybe I ought to do it after I finish watching this film. You see, kindness is about putting ourselves in another person's shoes. 
Kindness is a reminder that we ought to think about another person when making our decisions. Kindness is an act of opening our eyes, recognizing the needs of others, and responding with compassion, concern, and care, so transformation may happen. Now, how many of you have heard of the theory, survival of the fittest, right? Now, many of you might know that it comes from Charles Darwin's uh, a conversation about evolutionary biology. He coined that phrase, survival of the fittest, to talk about why certain uh, species would change over many millions of years. And survival of the fittest in our modern age has become, uh, that meaning has, has become more about being selfish, right? Meaning that we, for us to survive, which Charles Darwin recognized is a basic function of all life to seek a survival. And when we hear that survival of the fittest, we think, well, it means to really just look out for ourselves. But when Darwin studied human evolution, he argued that humankind was not motivated biologically to be that competitive and self-interested. Dar Darwin believed that we are profoundly social and, and a caring species. Can you, can you believe that? Darwin said that at the heart of who it is, we, who we are as humans, is that we care for one another and that we need other people to survive. So it really kind of makes that whole survival of the fittest thing that we have taken as, as gospel for us in this world, well, it kind of says, well, that's not really who we are as human beings. You know, you've heard that phrase, whoever dies with the most toy win, toys wins. <laughs> that's not what it means to be human. Now, many psychological studies have reiterated this point. Uh, many undergraduate students in psychology, introductory psych classes, have done their own studies to show this. And uh, There are countless ways. If you want to fill out surveys, there's all kinds of things you could do on the internet to make money and fill out surveys, and I'm sure you'd come across one of these one day. But it's reiterated the point, these psychological surveys have reiterated the point and proven the hypothesis again and again and again. Now, there was one article I came across in Psychology Today that said, Science has now shown that devoting resources to others, rather than having more and more for ourselves, brings about lasting well-being. Wow, what a great hypothesis. And kindness has been found by researchers to be the most important predictor of satisfaction and stability in a marriage. Think about that. So when we talk about the people who've lasted 50 60 years, what you will probably find most often is that they were kind to one another, even in the moments when they were most frustrated with one another. Many colleges, including Harvard now, are emphasizing kindness on applications for admission. Has anybody ever uh, filled out a recommendation for somebody or had one of those questionnaires you have to give a one to five? Kindness is now on those questionnaires. Whew, kind of crazy. Have you ever thought about Kindness as being something that you're rated on in this life. But it certainly would solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? <laughs> and when we, but like many things we are discovering in science and in psychology, Jesus and the wise elders of the church understood these facts long, long ago, and they began teaching it long ago. And when we go back to the actions and the words of Jesus, we see our Savior continually aware of the needs of the world around him. And I can point out a few instances. You have uh, Jesus being compelled to heal people. He heals people in his hometown. He heals people uh, who come to see him, and he, and he doesn't stop. He waits to wee hours of the night healing everybody who needed healing. Remember the woman who was accused of adultery? He, well, he could have stoned her, but he didn't. He re offered her compassion and grace. And when the thief on the cross was up there next to him, he offered him a glimpse of the kingdom and said, you know, you are going to be there with me today. And even Jesus, in his last words, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And right before he breathes his last this awareness of the needs of others and the call to respond is even baked into the early church. And if we go back to the, to the story of the Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the first uh, non-gospel reading in our Bible, you'll discover that the very first thing they do when forming their new church is to create a, a whole new order of people called deacons who are there to serve other people. And there's to serve the needs of the, of the orphan and the, widow, the widows, and those who are poor. 
And when we turn to Paul, that great evangelist and founder of churches, we see a man who gave us direction on what the Christian life should mean. Now, I, I think we get lost with Paul because he was speaking out of a particular cultural context. And, and there are things that we are arguing with about in our current reality, in the current form of history, that we'll point at something that Paul wrote or something that Jesus said, and we'll say, well, this is, backs up my point and it means that you're wrong and I'm right, right? But we forget that he has a constant refrain going through all his letters. And that constant refrain is this. It's not about you. It's not just about your individual salvation or the way that you live your life. Remember that you are a part of a greater community. Remember that you are members one of another. In that great long description of spiritual gifts found in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul tells us, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And here's the key phrase. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Well, doesn't that blow your mind? I mean, we have our own families, we have our kids, we have our parents, and, and we tend to think that our family is kind of it in this world. Sometimes it's us against the world. But when we align ourselves with the church, when we align ourselves with others who we worship with on a Sunday morning, we're saying that we're part of a greater community. Now, we may not all like each other all the time. We may get into arguments with one another. We may disagree on theology or have arguments about what word and what Bible story and what all that stuff. But what we do is come together at times of need, at times of help, at times when people have lost loved ones. You see, we are part of that great body of Christ. Kindness is remembering that our faith is about loving both God and our neighbor through our actions and our decisions. And in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul gives us a list of what I like to call his Ten Commandments to the faithful. And if we are to call ourselves Christians, he teaches us to first speak truth, because we are all part of a common society. Second, be angry, but don't sin. And then... After you've been angry long enough, let go. Now, he kind of says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. So the, the advice is to let that anger kind of go away quickly. <laughs> Three, don't steal, but make your work honest. Four, share, especially those with those who are in need. Five, don't gossip, don't spout hateful language, but instead build each other up. Six, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And i got to tell you, I was stumped about that one for a little while. My Bible study grew up on Thursday. What does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, think about this. If you have lost a loved one, you experience grief over the loss of a loved one, right? And so Paul's telling us not to grieve the Holy Spirit, which means don't die in our faith. Don't die because we cannot be the people that God calls us to be. Because then you cause the Holy Spirit to grieve over your loss. So he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Seven, put away bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, and slander, and all malice. And in number eight, instead, take up kindness. Be tenderhearted, forgive others as we have been forgiven by God. Nine, be imitators of God. And ten, live in love. There's a lot to unpack there. I could speak for another hour on all that. Maybe I'll do that over the course of summer or something like that. But I can spend... And I could spend several weeks talking about anger and jealousy and gossip and grieving the Holy Spirit because I, I think many of us get trapped in those cycles, don't we, in our life. But today, today I want us to remember about kindness. Now, there's an argument that says that kindness is a sign of weakness. And we look at some business practices and some unethical business practices as, as ruthlessness and deception and greed often are the motivating factors. And we could say, yep, they probably believe that kindness is something to take advantage of. This idea of a common good, or the best we can achieve for the most amount of people, is, is often forgotten and neglected. Instead, to pursue the best for one person, or one tribe, or one race. We hear stories of people preying on the kindness of others, and the newspaper loves to talk about those things. You stopped over to help change their tire and was shot with them. You know? and, and we hear more and more of those stories, and what does it do? It makes us fearful, and it makes us not want to do kind things to others. <clears throat> And we can be battered by that narrative in this world. We can become fearful and refrain from helping others. But I've discovered that for us to be the kind of people that God calls us to be, to be people who practice kindness, what we must do is rely on the strength that God provides and not the strength we have. 
and if you've lived long enough, you probably understood this, that it takes a strong, a wise, patient, and secure person to offer kindness <coughs> consistently, right? Because when is it that we get angry? When is it that we lash out? When is it that we gossip? Well, it's when we're feeling insecure, right? And so it takes the strength of God to help us through that. Because oftentimes we don't have the strength of character or the strength of will or the strength of family or friends or even the strength of our beliefs. And so oftentimes we will fail. But Paul reminds us in his letter to the Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul was beaten, Paul was tortured, Paul was imprisoned, he was chased, he was called names. But despite all of that, he continued to preach a gospel that asks us to be kind. Being kind is the thing that will keep us living well in this uncertain life. And so, church, I challenge you in this uncertain world that we live in, in this world that is full of slander and gossip and hatred and anger, well... Maybe we need to rediscover the lessons of history. Maybe we need to understand to be kind and rewind. Nah, that doesn't make sense, does it? Half our kids have no clue what it means to rewind anything. Instead, I think maybe we point to an even more ancient set of words, more widespread. The golden rule. You know, it's a premise found in nearly every world religion. And it says, do unto others as you wish to be done to you. Let us pray. Oh Lord, despite our fear, despite our anger, despite our insecurity, we offer ourselves to you. Be with us today. Teach us again how to have your eyes, your hands, and your mind when looking at others in our world. Give us enough grace that we can act with kindness. And Lord, may we every day become more like you. Amen. And we have the ambassadors of joy to share us, to share with us. They left, but they, they're here. Okay. <laughs> the ambassadors of joy are going to be here to share with us a song, maybe two, as we celebrate. Yeah, you want to? You want to? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I don't know whether he, are you old enough you, with your sermon? Are you old enough to remember when you had to rent the VCR? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> like we carry around that big old case. Yeah, yeah. That wow. Was, that was for, yeah. <laughs> We're doing good. If you want. It's up to you. <laughs> um, no, we'll just, we'll skip that one. We're going to start with uh, uh, one that uh, Karen sings. This is uh, Your Cries Have Awoken the Master. Oh, he knows. 
The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened and nowhere to run. By now your vessel is filling, and you're thinking that you'll surely drown. You cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you You're up there worried that he's fast asleep. The winds are so deadly, the water's so deep. But try to be patient, cause soon he'll bring peace. Just one word from his voice and it all must see.
don't think you're going to get that in church today. Do you? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> let, us, uh, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the joy that we were able to share, for the kindness that you give us in our hearts. And Lord, let us go forth in faith to love and serve you and to be there for others. Amen. Amen. Amen.